Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make this really cool lariat using beads from the Dollar Bead Box and Bag. The subscription I'm using is January 2018. And... I actually just filmed a tutorial on these earrings, also using materials from the Dollar Bead Box and Bag. So if you missed this video, go back to my channel and find it because these earrings are awesome and um, they're very easy to make. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to do the lariat. First, I'm going to go over with you the materials that I'm using from the Dollar Bead Box and Bag. And um, I'll explain to you um, my pattern and how I did this. Here is the list of materials you will need to make a lariat. You will need to cut 6 feet of bead stringing wire. You will need 16 8 by 10 millimeter check table cut oval, which is this bead here. I believe it's called olivine. You will need 16 10 millimeter check tabular square, which is this turquoise travertine. You will need 32 4 by 5 millimeter check pinch beads, and that is the aqua colored one right there. You will need 47 3 by 6 millimeter check rondelle beads in bronze, these right here. You will need 17 3 by 5 millimeter check gem cut rondelle, which is this amethyst purple. You will need one 16 millimeter check tabular square in this green color. And you will need 34 millimeter check fire polished beads. And the color is Chartreuse Nebulous, which is right here. And it's very similar in color to this bead here. And these I got from the Dollar Bead Bag. You will also need 32 4 millimeter check fire polish beads in the Victorian bronze which is this matte gold color and you will also need 82 3 millimeter brass round beads now 20 of the metal beads will be for this loop and the rest I use in the necklace and I do have some leftovers you will also need 11 OC beads and two crimp tubes so for the seed beads, and the only things I'm using in this that are mine are the seed beads and the bead string wire. Everything else is from the dollar bead box. Oh, and the crimps. The crimps, seed beads, and bead string wire. That's it. But that's basic stuff that everybody pretty much has. So this here is a seed bead I'm using. They are not the best quality. They're not all uniform, which is fine because this is the kind of bead, seed beads you want to use for bead stringing. Because it does not matter, you know, that they're funky shaped. So this color is a transparent brown, and over top of it is an AB, Aurora Borealis, and they have a silver lining. So that is the color I'm using. Um, but um, if you don't have this, you can just use a transparent brown or a transparent silver line brown. I, I like to use a neutral color for this because I already have a lot of colors going on so um, just find something you think uh, looks good with the necklace. So this is a list of materials and I always put the materials down there in the description bar so you guys can see everything and I counted the beads out because I wanted to uh, make sure that you guys um, have the same pattern I have so that's why I counted them out. So I'm going to tell you how I went about designing the pattern for this necklace because I get asked all the time to talk about how I design something. Not just show how to make something, but talk about how I came up with the idea of the design. So, what I did is I took the bead that I liked the most. Well, first I put colors together that I liked, okay? And then I took the bead that I really liked and I felt like it was kind of the focal bead before I decided to use this large focal bead, which was this bead. I really love these square ones and so what I did is I took and I laid them out in my bead mat I you know, separated them like biscuits or cookies on a cookie sheet okay and I put them out you know in little piles and then I took this green one because that was the next size down and I put one green one with each one of these and then I went on to the next bead which for me was this because that's the next size down Okay, and I have a bunch of these. I think there's 70 on a strand. 
So I figured that I would have enough to do three in each pile. So in each pile, with the square bead and the oval bead, I put three of these bronze rondelles with those in piles, okay? So then, after that, I went on to this purple rondelle, and I put one in each pile, because I only have 25 of those, so I, I did one in each pile. And then I went on to the check fire polish beads, and there's 50 on a strand, so I knew that I would have enough to do at least two in each pile. So I'm doing two different colors of the check fire polish beads. I have this green uh, chartreuse nebulous, and I have the gold one. So I did two, two of these in each pile, and two of those in each pile. And then I went to my metal beads, these three millimeter um, brass rounds, and there's a hundred of those in a pack. So I figured that I would have enough to do four in each pile. So I did four in each pile. So after I made all my piles, I took one pile, and I knew that I had to make a pattern up, okay, with that one pile, because I would have enough beads if I, I hope this is making sense, I knew that I would have enough beads. So I took that one pile of beads, and I made a little pattern on my mat, and I got some seed beads, because that's my little filler, and um, I came up with this pattern right here. So I have three seed beads, three bronze rondelles, three seed beads, I have a little pattern here that I did. I broke up the pattern with three seed beads, I have another pattern here, three seed beads, and then my other pattern. So this is my pattern, okay, that I came up with. So I repeated this pattern over and over and over, and I discovered that I had enough to make a necklace. So what I actually did is I took bead stringing wire, and I wanted this to be long, and I was thinking maybe I could do six feet and I took it off my spool and actually I discovered that I only had seven feet left on an entire spool so I just took all of it but you will need six feet of bead stringing wire to make this necklace so I took six foot and I strung on 20 metal beads I folded it in half and I took two wires the bead stringing wire and I passed it through a purple rondelle this bronze rondelle my big focal bead a bronze rondelle and a purple just like that, okay? So two strands were going through these beads right here. Both strands were going through all of those beads. And then I separated the strands and I started my pattern. And right here is my pattern. Now I made a lariat like maybe 10 years ago for my mom. And back then I was really stuck on having things same, the same on you know both sides all the way around and um she is too and I laid out the pattern and I made the, up the necklace and I thought it looked fine I finished it off I gave it to her she loved it and just recently she was wearing it and I was looking at it and like why does that look so weird and then I realized that I had the same exact pattern on each side so let me see here her necklace was like this okay the entire necklace was strung with the same beads on each side and it just looks so weird and at the very end the both strands are the same length so for this necklace I knew that I wanted it to look sort of random with the pattern but I wanted the pattern to be the same and I wanted one strand to be longer so what I did I put this pattern on first and I realized you know what I should do I should just skip two of my little groups here so I skipped this bronze and this one in my second strand so if you look here you could see that this group and this group is not in my second strand see what I mean when I go like that those two groups the bronze um, rondelles the two check fire polish beads the metal beads and the purple rondelle I took those out of my second strand. So when I took those out, I did the pinch bead, you know, in my metal, the oval metal pinch bead, seed beads, and my um, check fire polish with my square bead. So I did repeat the pattern. It is the same. It's just the only thing I did differently is I left those two out in the second strand. So now I'm going to hold the necklace the way it is and I'm going to show you see how 
it looks sort of random but it's actually not and going through the entire necklace all the way down here to the bottom you can see that this strand here is a little bit longer than that one so it really helped and I'm going to try and convince my mom to let me <laughs> restring that necklace I made it such a long time ago and I would like to fix it um, maybe I could do I hope hopefully I'll have some more beads because she actually said that she would like it longer so mom I'll make it longer if you let me <laughs> fix it okay so that there is just my pattern. I repeat it over and over and the only thing I did differently on the other side is I skipped the bronze and that group there and I have this pattern so you're gonna go ahead and string your beads just like this and did I tell you guys that you need 20 of the metal beads in this loop? I did have this loop bigger and I felt like it was too big because these slipped through the loop too easily so I have 20 metal beads in that loop. So go ahead and string all of your beads and I'm going to show you how to finish off the lariat. We're going to be using crimps and I think I want to do some seed beads on the end. So I'll go ahead and get my stuff and I'll come back and finish this necklace off with you guys. So this is how I'm going to finish the lariat off. I'm going to put a crimp on the end five seed beads and then pass my wire back through a few inches of beads. I actually came out of the rondelles here, the bronze rondelles. And um, I crimped my crimp there and I have this little, it looks like a teardrop, a teardrop of seed beads. I thought it looked a little bit fancier than just having a crimp at the very end and a wire poking out. So I'm going to do it now with you guys. And to make sure that this necklace is very um, soft and flexible, you don't want it to be stiff, what I like to do is hold it up high, okay you can't see it, I'm holding it up high, I'm going to take and make a small coil, like a bracelet size of my beads, just like that, okay, so see how it coils nicely, and it's not unraveling, so I know that that is the tension that I need, so now I'm taking my clamp off, I'm picking up my crimp, and I'm using chain nose pliers to crimp this, because I really don't feel like it's necessary to do a crimper because of how this end is. Okay, so there's my crimp, five seed beads, sliding that down, take the wire, pass, skip over the five seed beads, pass through this crimp, and I'm going to go all the way till I get out of that. those bronze rondelles, that's where I want to go let's see, how far did I make it? sometimes I'll have seed beads that have tiny holes and I can't really pass through them a second time with the wire so if that's a problem I just won't be able to pass through as many. Okay. Almost there. One more rondelle. So now I have to hold my tail and adjust this. Sometimes I like to take the chain nose pliers and find which one's loose. That one's loose, so I'm going to pull this one. Okay. Like that. Pulling this tight. I have my little teardrop shape. Okay, and this here is making a nice coil, so I think the tension is just right. Before I smash it though, I will pull this tight to make sure that this is not loose down here, because that will loosen up. And I have to be careful not to smash my sea beads. So see how I'm holding the tail 
tight and there I go crimp it and flip it over and crimp the other side crimp both sides okay and then cut off the tail and there we go our necklace is done it's so pretty I love all of these colors and by the way you don't have to have these same exact beads to make this necklace go through your stash see what you have put some colors that you like together that look good do different shapes different sizes of beads because that's what I did here I have different shapes different sizes have a big focal bead like this make a loop maybe you don't have metal beads you can use seed beads in your loop you can do um 80 seed beads if you want 11 o's whatever size you want so this is made to be worn two different ways I can go just like this and I wish I could zoom out more okay so see I lay it like that I'm gonna take my two ends pass through this loop okay and I think when I put it on my neck it was about here I want to say it was so this is the extra that I had dangling and it looked like this okay and the other way to wear it is to lay it like this on your neck okay separate these two strands so at the back this is what it's going to look like you're going to have one like this okay the end coming down here take the other one go around and then when you slide it up you have these two ends and you just pass them through this loop okay and this is what it looks like on the front of your neck just like that and you have the two dangling strands and one's just a little bit longer which is perfect that's what I want so here it is I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you give this a try and try with some other beads in your stash and see what you can come up with I would love to see a picture of it on Facebook so if you can share with me and this is it I hope you guys enjoyed this video please like this video leave me a comment subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and like me on Facebook and don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry we've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest thanks for watching